What's up YouTube? This is Daniel Carter at Afro Perp Keeper here. Uh, it is a nice and warm but blustery January afternoon uh, here in the Texas Hill Country and today we are here with Jack Schoenhoff. Is it Schoenhoff or Schnoff? Schoenhoff. Schoenhoff. Yes. All right. Today we are here with Jack Schoenhoff of uh, Jack's World of Wildlife yes. on YouTube. I think yeah, take this left. This left. Woo! We're out here in the middle of uh, Austin, Texas, and it just so happens to be the perfect weather and time of year to find us some salamanders. So Jack is a pretty entertaining guy. Um, he has his own YouTube channel, like I said, Jack's World of Wildlife. Unlike me, his whole thing is wildlife, um, hence the very appropriate title. So his videos don't center around a, a collection of captive animals at all. He actually goes out into the native habitats of animals, both domestically and internationally. So he's been to Costa Rica, he's been to Mexico, he's been to Australia. In nine days, he is going to Thailand. And so before this happens, uh, we made it a point to do a collaboration. So we are out here in the heart of Central Texas in Austin to go look for some western slimy salamanders. Yes, indeed. And as you may recall, uh, if you've been around on my channel long enough, we have done this once before with a friend of mine named Kenneth. Uh, we don't have any tried and true biologists in the car with us today, but we're gonna have just as much fun going down there, looking for some herps. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. It's great weather, great time of year for it. Good great. company. Yeah, good company. <laughs> the planet we live on is infested with life. Creeping, crawling, slithering life. Once upon a time, everything we did revolved around the natural world. But now, there are billions of us, and we as a species have never strayed further from our roots. Even so, some of us continue to slip through the cracks. I'm not scared of any animal, no matter the number of teeth, claws, or legs. My only directive is to reconnect you with the wild, to defend the creatures that need it most, and to do my part to preserve the biodiversity of our remarkable world. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. Hi everyone, I'm here with Daniel Carter from Afro Herb Keeper. Okay, so unlike the last time we were here, there's actually quite a bit of water present oh, on scene. I didn't bring anything even remotely appropriate for swimming. All but I'm hearing is excuses, man. First critter we've sighted in the roots of this giant live oak tree is a uh, harvestman. Daddy long legs. <laughs> We're learning about moss today. Jack, Jack knows a lot more about moss than I do. <laughs> so moss is uh, technically a protist, uh, which means it's not actually a plant. It's more like a I would probably call it a terrestrial algae. It does share a lot of similarities with plants, including that green photosynthetic um, uh, coloration. Um, but as far as it goes, they lack a lot of the vascular systems and uh, leaves and stems and things like that uh, that would classify them as a plant. Moss, primitive, fascinating. Yes. Very exciting stuff. We're actually taking just a few small chunks of this moss uh, right here for use in vivariums. Mm -hmm. It's no harm in taking just a tiny, tiny piece because it, it is a renewable resource. Yes. Prickly pear will grow absolutely anywhere. Uh, you can even find it 100 feet up in a live oak tree. That's crazy. It's epic uh, fight. Yeah, you, you don't <laughs> think of big arid cacti like that being epiphytic, but oh, that's uh, funny. there they are. We have found what might be a, uh, a good spot. We have a lot of moss, rocks up here. Oh, that is beautiful. There's some really nice moss growth up here. All right, here's our moss B-roll. There is certainly a lot of moss to be found around here. What's good for moss is good for salamanders, so yes, let's, uh, let's flip some rocks. I think rocks are going to be a little bit of a better bet than rotting logs, just because they are more in the ground. Oh, oh hey. We have some ants. Those are Campanotis. Jack is an ant guy. I do like ants quite a bit. Uh, so these guys are related to your common uh, carpenter ants. Not entirely sure what species this is. Looks like maybe Campanotus texanus, maybe Americanus, um, which is a soil nesting species. Uh, so obviously not living quite up to their name of carpenter ant. How do these guys get by? 
Uh, so what these guys actually feed on is uh, proteins and sugars, uh, like most ants. So these guys are going to feed on other insects, um, tree sap. Uh, if you drop a Gatorade bottle in the woods, they'll probably drink that too. Looks like there's a couple different kinds here, or different, they have different functions. Correct, different casts or castes. Uh, so these big ones here with the big heads, those are um, uh, soldiers, and then these smaller ones are just the normal workers. Uh, so the soldiers um, in the Campanotus um, have huge mandibles for biting because Campanotus lack um, stingers, so they have to bite to defend their nest as opposed to actually stinging. Well, that's good to know, considering I was just poking them. Yes, they do not have stingers. It will be a good payoff when we actually find a salamander. Yes, sir. Okay, this one is heavier than I thought. You can see some of the more traditional Texas foliage, even in here in the middle of uh, all this moss and stuff, we have a bunch of yuccas. Let's try this guy. Uh, there's a spider. Nada. Vilch. This is some really nice wood. This would be great for isopods or millipedes. There's a big spider. Oh yeah, a big ol' hefty girl. Uh, Carolina wolf spider. Hogna carolinensis. Stick it in your mouth. No. <laughs> I refuse. Okay. This is enough. a nice one though. Yeah, she is nice. Check out the, uh, the orange on that. Yeah, forehead thorax. Mm. That's a very handsome Ooh. and or beautiful spider. Or both. As long as it's not biting me. Break the gender norms of spider attractiveness. Sure, Jack. <laughs> I can do that. There you go. That's a spider right there. I ever seen it. Yes, sir. Those eyes are really nice. Dazzling. I'm going back and forth between uh, all this crap you're saying and trying to uh, <laughs> trying to admire the, the natural beauty of this creature. I get it, I get it. Good luck. As weird and alien as they look, spiders are very cool. I like stuff that looks weird anyway. Yeah, me too. Neither of us know a ton about fungi, but uh, here's one. A couple more over here. Oh yeah. Oh, another Campanotus colony. Nice. <sighs> I almost didn't Campanotus them. So, at the end of the day, it's just like a bunch of stupid roaches. Can you say termites are roaches? Yeah. That's a, that's a very interesting fact. Oh, no, wait, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. Isoptera is now blatidae. That's cool. Because they took away termites as their own order. That's insane. So technically, yes, because of the similarities they share with wood-eating roaches, they are now synonymous with the order blatidae. I don't have any, I don't have enough pickup like shots to put over this and keep it relevant but that's a cool fact <laughs> this spot looks fairly promising a uh, little limited in size and scale but we might find something here there's a worm earthworm an annelid oh yeah there you go you could slurp that no that's perfect sustenance for you for your high metabolism thanks <laughs> hey it's what moles eat that's true. Moles are sericids. Moles have to eat their body weight in food every day. We're putting, we're putting this worm back. I don't want to hurt him. Um, well, technically, he lacks a complex nervous system. Well, listen. Um, I know that, <laughs> but... So at this point, I think we just need to cover as much... I found one! Oh, really? Yep, here he is. That's a big oh, one. Oh, yay! We got any gloves? Yeah. He's not going anywhere. As you can see, Jack and I both have a very professional uh, camera setup. Yeah. We're putting on these gloves to ensure that none of our uh, harmful natural oils <laughs> are uh, d uh, dispersed on the salamander's skin. Plethodonids um, lack lungs, which means they do all of the respiration through their semi-permeable skin, which means that skin, in turn, is actually very, oh, very There's sensitive. One wiggly boy right here. He is a wriggly one. That's a beautiful animal. Yeah, look at those spots. So this is Plethodon albegula. Look at his little face. This is a fairly sizable one. Uh, the ones in this uh, neck of the woods are actually somewhat dwarfed compared to their cousins out in the eastern United States, just yes. due to the fact that they are so isolated here. 
They have a smaller habitat, they've grown smaller over time to make up for the lesser resources. Yes, indeed. There you go, there's a the little gummy lizard. Let me get some, let me get a close up of his cute little head. Moving him around too much. Beautiful, beautiful little guy. This is what we came for. Yes, indeed. It's the only terrestrial salamander you can find in this part of the world. Uh, they say there are tiger salamanders around here. They are definitely not in abundance. <laughs> yeah, they say they're up by me too, and I've never, ever, ever seen one. Yeah, we know a lot of reptile nerds and... Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, did I go too far? <laughs> Let's just say reptile uh, aficionados. Fanatics. <laughs> I love the little webby toes on this guy. He's, he's, he's coming for you. He's about to snuggle up. Ah. Oh. No, sir. You are not allowed in there. Get out of my crotchal region. That's not family friendly. You can, I, get, him, you can get him fired from his job. I'm a family this. friendly YouTuber. <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> he's going, he's okay, going dude, all the way up. Showing a little too much skin Whoa, here. A little too much skin. Yikes. Oh, I bet he's cold. Good buddy. <laughs> yeah, like that's a problem for him. <laughs> Okay. Well, nice. Plethodon you can, you can albigula. Tell, you can tell albigularis. all of his salamander buddies that uh, he got to first base with a famous YouTuber. <laughs> You're going to keep this up for the next hour and a half? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me, dog. Okay. Our little friend is going back to his uh, moist and wet home. Oh, yeah. Say moist again. No. <laughs> At some point during this expedition, I've gained, a, uh, gained an addition to my my neckwear here. Very nice. Yeah, stylish. Very stylish. It is a really beautiful day out here. We found one so far. We are continuing our hunt. Salamanders zero, Dan and Jack one. Hey Dan, you probably kick that tree over. It looks, uh, looks like sound. I bet I could kick this tree over, Jack. That sounds like a very real, realistic and, and reasonable thing for me to be able to do. Yeah, I know, that's why I said it. As you can probably tell, it's been very wet, very cold in this area for the last few weeks. Some really nice lush carpet moss here. Fascinating, kind of, sort of. It's very soft. I see some fernage in there, even. Some fernage, you say? Yes, sir. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Ferns are not very common in Texas, but in some areas, very restricted areas, they can certainly still be found. So as you can see, as long as I don't trip and fall and die, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of little tiny rocks forming this big uh, amalgamation, this big pile. And this is what salamanders love, at least the ones in this area. We've got all this moss growth and these ferns. These are all indicative of ideal habitat. There's a, uh, I see a big clump of maidenhair ferns over there. I know you like those. We've got a stone centipede and a millipede. Any salamanders, bro? Oh. What the heck, man? No manders, dude. I think we might have just found the last one. The last one. The last melon. Here we have a couple different species of fern. Oh, this really cool one that's all over the cliff is called a maidenhair fern because some weirdo thought it looks like a maiden's hair. We have a ton of moss, as we've been discussing. There's moss everywhere, on everything. These are some very cool ferns. That is some nice fernage. It is. It really is. Oh yeah. These are a really cool plant though. Very prehistoric looking. Uh, cause ferns naturally stress easy when you when you move them. Right, so they die of them off and then they off all grow back. Dead stuff anyway. So I just take the rhizome. So Jack has told me that if you want to cultivate this stuff in a vivarium 
uh, what you got to do, you got to take the rhizome, basically the roots. You see this new growth coming in right there. The root system. The root system. And uh, include that in your tank, keep it moist, and uh, this will probably die off, but it'll grow back from the rhizome. This does look like really good habitat for a few other species, but it's unlikely that we're going to find anything uh, this time of year. We are, however, here for salamanders, so that's what we'll keep looking for. They are abundant in this area, but due to the nature of the, uh, the rocks around here, how they're able to just wiggle down into the ground, uh, they come out in the cooler parts of the day, and then they might take shelter uh, when it gets warmer, colder. And uh, every rock that we flip, every log that we flip, we are making sure to put it back as close to its original orientation as we can. Leave no trace. Uh, hopefully, I think Jack's gonna die back there. We, uh, hopefully we can tough it out a little longer. Hopefully we can persevere and find, find some other ones. We have found a species of liverwort growing here uh, alongside this moss. Jack, how, how you feeling? We found one salamander, a uh, millipede. You got anything to contribute to my video? Angry. <laughs> Watch there be like 10 under that. That would be amazing. That would be so epic. Did you have to say that in my ear? Yeah, actually. Okay. I'm sorry. I was trying to get some shots of you. Sorry? Are you, uh, <laughs> you want to run that by my good ear? We found we found maybe a highlight of the. Tr oh, I can't even see it. I know. It's trying to. It's trying to figure You're out. You're trying to get it on your face. Yes. That's an intelligent thing to do. Thank so you. this is this is a uh, Texas cave scorpion. This is a Texas cave man. Ooh. I felt him get mad. Ooh. <laughs> ah. This is a species of scorpion that I have not personally seen before in this area. I know they exist. Jack, please. Mm. I'm trying to I'm trying to make an educational video here. I'm just trying to show him some love. <laughs> Go to Jack's channel for more of this. <laughs> yeah. I promise. I promise I actually inter, inter I mean ed, educate too, not just entertain. So this is pseudo Eurocteris redoli. This one is not happy about being messed with, but as you can see, I mean, it's just a scorpion. This is a primarily cave dwelling species, so it makes sense that we'd find them in these same rock piles that the salamanders love. It's good habitat for them. The only scorpions I normally see around here are uh, a lighter color. They have a, a stripe down the back. They aren't this solid reddish, brownish, black. And this is a juvenile, like I said, they will get bigger than this. I really want to put them on my face, I think that'd be funny. You're welcome to try. I'm trying to. Uh, Don't drop them in your eye. Like eye drops. <laughs> yeah, take a thumbnail. The, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is, that's, that's all you need. There's the thumbnail. That's There's quality thumbnail. content right there. That's, that's quality content. Educational. This is what 12 year olds on YouTube will click on to see. I'm slowly, you know that, you know that game where you like, like you inch an Oreo into nose, your mouth? But, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like that, except with a scorpion. I've a, he's going to go into my nostrils. <laughs> uh, don't, don't get annoyed with me blinking, please. Please don't sting me on the island. Ah! So I have a centipede on my person now, but we are uh, taking some pickup shots of this beautiful little girl and we're going to talk about her a bit. If you want to see the footage we're about to take of this girl, go check it out on Jack's channel. At Jack's World of Wildlife! Jack's World of Wildlife. All right, y'all, so it has not been as fruitful an adventure as uh, the last time I was out here, but we did find one salamander. It's a big one, big female, uh, and that's certainly much better than no salamanders at all. Uh, we found a lifer Texas cave scorpion. That's really cool. I like scorpions a lot. I have not seen one of those before. Cool millipedes, earthworms, spiders, moss. All in all, it was a fairly successful trip. We found some cool things. Yes. Not forgetting the ants either. Of course not. Plenty of ants. <laughs> no shortage of ants. So thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions pertaining to 
salamanders, invertebrates, whatever, uh, drop them in the comment section and I will try to get back to you. If you're not already, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you're subscribed already, make sure you've hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new content. Mm. And mm. most importantly, don't forget, go check out Jack's channel at Jack's World of Wildlife yes. for more incredible wildlife adventures. I thought I could zoom in, but I, see, I can't. See, that's what I said. I yeah. Can't, you can't zoom in on the front-facing camera. What the heck is that? What's what's up with that? Absolutely atrocious. What's the deal with airline food? All right. <laughs> see y'all in the next video. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a good one.